Good afternoon, everyone. Time for another member update. Apologize about that video that took so long for yesterday's trading. It actually was uploading all night. And uh, I have changed my screen resolution. I think the problem was my screen resolution was on these new big monitors that was too, it was just too big. So it's creating these huge files and I don't really need those. So you can see on my balance here, um, I think the account was 27.4 yesterday, now it's 28.8. So uh, I really didn't get filled on too, too many of the scaled in buys. Um, let's pull up Bitcoin USDT market and take a look at it here. So yeah, the, the bottom that we had there that was pretty much it. We had another drop. Let's see if we can find it on the chart here. So at the time that I did the video, I think it was this, this bottom right here. You can see we rolled over. We made a, a little bit lower, just a little bit lower. And this is where I did a buy and then I also did a buy on this rally I think um, at one point I was carrying like half a Bitcoin for one of these rallies so that's where I made uh, roughly fourteen hundred dollars was just the uh, the move in Bitcoin pretty much didn't play any of the alts now the news that we missed that was Coinbase uh, was the listing of Bitcoin Cash. So the listing of Bitcoin Cash, uh, it's kind of interesting They have prices going all the way back to December 15th. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure where they got their prices from. As far as I know, yesterday was when it, they listed it. I may, I may be wrong. It, it may be that they just released their Bitcoin Cash. I don't think that's what it was, I think it was the listing of it. I don't remember seeing Bitcoin Cash here. So they must have gone and got their prices from someone else and listed them on their exchange. But if you remember on Bitcoin, I showed you that print of 14.2. You can see when we go to the weekly, that's what we're gonna to have to see to view yesterday. You can see the bottom here and it comes in uh, 16.3, 16.4. So, yeah, they did revise their numbers. So you can't you can't trust any of the numbers on their charts here. Uh, they're all there are alternatives to Coinbase, which seems to go down at critical times, like whenever you need to act. Everyone else is acting and they go down. It's it's pretty lame if you think about it. What kind of money are they? Uh, what kind of revenues do they have? I would imagine massive, massive revenues. I think I read a comment from somebody else that it's a multi-billion dollar company. It's pretty hard to believe that a multi-billion dollar company can't have a accurate website chart and exchange and keep the site up. That's all they do and they can't do that right. So it's gonna be hard for me to believe that it's DDoS at DDoS attacks, like a lot of these exchanges claim. Um, more likely it's just too high of a volume, but again, if it's too high of a volume, just deal with it. Uh, it's not that difficult. You could probably take uh, your average skilled coder uh, with a decent server and write software that could do what, what Coinbase does. It's not that complicated. They're just getting price quotes from somewhere and they're buying and selling Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin with dollars. That's not that difficult to do. So clearly something's up. I think the competitors are Gemini, uh, GDAX. Uh, I, I can't remember what the competitors are. There, there aren't too many. That's another indicator that 
the crypto space is still undervalued. The reason I say that is because I don't think we'll see the true value of cryptocurrencies until there is a wide open way to pass back and forth between fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies. And the governments of the world have made it very, very difficult. As I pointed out before, Americans aren't even allowed to have an account on Bitfinex, which is like was the major US exchange and you can't have an ex account there. So there are severe bottlenecks that have been put in place by the governments of the world, China being the worst offender, to prevent fiat money from flowing in to cryptocurrencies. Well, that being the case, just that fact alone tells me this isn't done yet. Now, if they open the spigots wide open at some point and money could flow freely into cryptocurrencies back and forth, we probably get a huge rally and then a massive crash. And we could even get Bitcoin down to $5,000 or something simply because once people realize that they can get in and get out, it might not have as much appeal. So this is typical of what governments do all the time is they make these things self-fulfilling prophecies. The attempt to restrict the capital flow into cryptocurrencies ends up driving the price higher. That's the same with black markets. You could make the same analogy with drugs. Uh, you can look at the price of heroin, the price of cocaine, the price of even prescription medications that there's a black market for. I think people pay upwards of $25 a pill or something for oxycodone. I think the things probably cost, you know, five cents to make or something like that. Anytime you have an artificial restriction on a market, you're going to have artificially high prices. So I think it's possible that the governments have actually caused this with their restrictions. Now, it's not anywhere near what it is in China, because you can see you get the money, you can get the money in in quite a few places. Uh, just looking at the exchanges, you can see here the volume. Bitfinex came in at 5.5 billion in a 24 hour period. Bitthumb came in at 4.7 billion. Look at Bittrex, incredible. Twice, more than twice the volume of Poloniex as Poloniex uh, really shot themselves in the foot with their server issues. Binance, look at Binance come in here, number four. That's the one I traded IOTA on that is uh, based out of Hong Kong. So that's kind of a back door in for the Chinese money. It also has a lot of uh, South Korean money. So you can see the major ones on Binance are uh, Bitcoin Cash, Verge, and there's a coin I don't even know what it is. There's so much out there, there's uh, too much to even keep track of. So you can see Verge is a $2 billion market cap. Uh, supposedly 12 billion coins in existence. Take this all with a grain of salt. Done nearly a billion dollars in volume. Here's the exchanges, Bittrex, Binance, Cryptopia, Yobit, Novix. So these are, except for Bittrex, these are some of the minor exchanges, but there's a lot of business going on on these minor exchanges. Would this be a coin I would look at? No. Absolutely not. It's run too far too fast. Uh, that horse is out of the barn. Wouldn't even chase it. So third on uh, Binance is Ethereum, then Bitcoin, then IOTA. Boy, did I miss that play. My full intent was to uh, exactly what I did, executed correctly, which was buy uh, and sell, and then it's it's not really going to be uh, clear here because it's really only clear on the Binance chart. We'll take a look at that real quick here. 
So you can see IOTA on the Binance chart. So I, I bought in this rise, I sold that top, I bought in here, I sold that, and then I slowly, slowly, slowly accumulated on this uh, fall down. But guess what? I got shaken out. I did not make nearly as much money as I should have made because I was fully expecting this bounce. In fact, the, you can see the bounce is absolutely textbook. One would expect a bounce to come in right at 16.5 to 17, and it came in at 16.9. So this was a textbook bounce, uh, perfect play on IOTA, but I've learned to recognize that uh, there's something going on every day. So if you miss, you can just move on to the next thing. So that's IOTA, um, meant to accumulate that one, turned into a trade. That happens sometimes. Sometimes what is meant to be some type of long-term accumulation play can turn into a trade because it moves too far too fast. That happens to me fairly frequently, where I will be right about a coin like Florin coin. And this is another one that I lost out on big profits because I took my uh, profit too early, way too early. Because I showed you on a video I was accumulating uh, this, especially this drop. That was, uh, it was those red candlesticks that convinced me, wow, uh, we're down around 500. And we got that rise and uh, I think I sold some and then I accumulated some, but I did not hang on for this big, big move. Did not see that coming. Phenomenal, phenomenal move. But that's par for the course. There are many doing that sort of thing. Take a look at Steam Dollars. Incredible move. Not something you can chase because uh, it's just uh, too late. But, you know, you can catch the next thing. So this... This would have been a very good textbook breakout to buy. This is exactly the type of breakout that I look for. If I would have been watching it and catching it, um, I usually buy in when the green candlesticks start. And let's get a better view of the candlesticks. So I usually buy in when the green candlesticks start and I just add on the way up. If it's too late and I do a buy, say here, what I'll normally look for is this correction. And I will come in and drop some bids down. I'll just look at the chart and say on this one, if I had gotten in here at the top of this green candle, I would have been looking back at the technical picture and looking back for a correction right back to here. So I would have put some bids in after I'd accumulated a little bit. I would have stopped buying when it turned and I would have put some bids way down below the market, hope to get picked up which in this case you would have been picked up. Then, uh, then continue to buy as it rises and hopefully you can get out uh, in time. Normally the best time to get out is on a huge green candlestick like right here. And the reason why that is is because the, those green candlesticks, just like I've shown you the red candlesticks on the downside, the green candlesticks on the upside with these t uh, reverse tails, uh, basically the reason why the volume is so very high is because this is where the mass of insane buying bots and people like me just piling in meets the massive volume of people who've been in for a while who are like, oh, this is a fantastic price, I got to sell. And that generates this gigantic volume spike. Normally when you see that, a price going straight up, a volume spike going straight up, that's the time to sell. It's not perfect, but it's the best indicator. So this one looks to be forming up some kind of pennant, but it's definitely run too far too fast to get involved with. So, Let's just go down the coins again, and uh, then I'm going to get back to trading. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have Steam Dollars, and we have Steam. Uh, both of those, unfortunately, are on pretty low volume, volume that I'm not comfortable with. You can see that Steam Dollars has only transacted 188 Bitcoins in volume. That's, that's not, not enough volume. 
steam, steam itself is quite a bit higher volume at 496 Bitcoin, but still, that's tiny volume. Uh, it's not enough volume for me to be comfortable. Could I buy this? Yeah, I could buy this on a pullback. Uh, I don't see one coming. So those two are out. Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash is rallying again. And you can see that it had a tremendous, tremendous spike. We'll try to get uh, the five minute to see. Okay, so Bitcoin, uh, let's go to the two day. So Bitcoin Cash came from a base of uh, basically 0.1 Bitcoin and ran to 0.2 Bitcoin. Now that's going to be much bigger in dollar terms if we're talking about Bitcoin going up at the same time. So you're going to see more in dollar terms. This is just quoted in terms of Bitcoin. But you can see 0.25, that means that Bitcoin Cash is worth a quarter of a Bitcoin. That's pretty amazing considering how high priced Bitcoin is. Do I see anything here? No, there's nothing going on here that I see. Uh, I wouldn't touch it right now. Uh, so let's get back up to the winners. Now, why, why do you want to watch the percentage winners? Well, the reason why you want to watch the percentage winners is because that's where you're going to see the breakouts come in. Normally, they're going to be down here. It just depends on how big the list is. But you know, you want to keep your eye on this list and watch a coin that's jumping the list. Uh, Bitcoin Dark, well, unfortunately, 19 Bitcoin. So let's look at storage. Okay, that's 168 Bitcoins volume. Um, it's up quite a bit, but unfortunately, it's listed as questionable on the exchange. So that one's out. Digibyte, that's phenomenal volume but there's a phenomenal amount of coins so you can see it's correcting back from a pennant breakout that's actually a very very good uh, entry point unless it's too far extended and it's pretty far extended so this is one that I could play. I'd have to convert and get some Bitcoin, raise some Bitcoin. Um, this is one that you could buy right here. You'd have to watch this very closely. You're gonna put your stops down around 305, 306, or something like that. If this thing starts to tank, you don't wanna be in it. But it's definitely got that perfect pennant formation, perfect breakout from the pennant formation, and we're in the perfect pullback situation. So that's actually the best play we've seen so far. Um, Burst was one that I was in. Again, 108 Bitcoin volume. Mm, that's pretty weak. As you can see, it's broken out again. It's trying to make new highs. Nexium, uh, Tiny, Lisk. So there really isn't a lot. Now, I always want to look at the percentage losers. I showed you Einsteinium yesterday, and that just looks kind of sick. Yeah, I would say that one is sick. So let's jump over to the futures and take a look at what's going on in the real quote-unquote markets so do I check this on a daily basis well I check it but I don't spend a lot of time with it it's just so much more boring <laughs> than uh, than the crypto markets of course silver and gold to some extent and platinum maybe a little bit are good for long-term investment but until, like I said many times, until this whole thing blows, uh, we're, we're just not going to see a move. Today's big mover is the VIX. This this thing's a, a constant tease. It just uh, you can see the pattern. Um, I don't put a lot of stock in it. Always check the bonds. You can see we're still in a bond bear market, 
And now we actually have the 30 year starting to catch up. Not significantly. Um, nothing super serious, but uh, bear market, uh, you can see 10 year note kind of wants to break down. Five year note has already broken down and the two year note is still breaking down. So interest rates continue to rise and it's starting to get ugly. If you remember, I did the video about the three recessions or the three uh, series of uh, downturns and cuts and this uh, first one was very, very steep. The next one was less steep. And this one was the least steep, but you can see now on the two year note, we're starting to get into a sharp downturn of the two year note, which is uh, translates to a sharp rise in interest rates. This brings us back to interest rates that were in place um, during the crash because the crash started right here. This is when interest rates started dropping drastically to try to deal with the illiquidity of Bear Stearns and all the rest of them that tanked and ended up going bankrupt. So you can see we've, we've retraced maybe a third of those interest rate cuts and we're turning into a serious downtrend. So, you know, we always want to jump over and take a look at the stock market because uh, the the rule of thumb with the stock market is three steps and a stumble. Uh, you can see here the Dow Jones is up here around 24,000. Um, wow. Is that an unbelievable bull market? Who would have thought that the Dow, I thought it was... Uh, yeah, below 8,000 here. Yes, in the 6,000s up to 24,000, a fourfold increase. A fourfold increase in the Dow since the money printing started during the last recession. And we're a full eight years later. How long can they keep this bubble going? S&P 500, same thing. Wasn't the S&P the one that put in 666? As the bottom, now we're up to 2682. Unbelievable. Same thing, NASDAQ, NASDAQ bubble of unbelievable proportions. NASDAQ touching down to 1,000, up to 6,500, a six fold gain. Where did all that printed money go? It went to the stock market. Russell 2000, 400 to 1,500. So as you can see, there's still a ton of money out there in the financial markets. Um, money continues to pour into stocks, dwarfing. Now, admittedly, the cryptocurrencies coming up now to 600 plus billion. That's pretty decent amount of money, but that's all cryptocurrencies combined. Bitcoin coming in at about 276 billion and uh, Ethereum come in at 76 billion. Now you compare that, or this is basically the market cap of some medium to large size companies. Not, well, not medium, large companies. Uh, there are, you know, Amazon I think is nearly a trillion dollar market cap. So that's four times uh, Bitcoin and nearly twice all cryptocurrencies put together. So again, when I said about the bottleneck, the bottleneck is still in place. The bottleneck is at Coinbase. The bottleneck is at Ch in China. The bottleneck is, uh, to some extent, still in Japan. Although Japan seems to have kind of been snubbing its nose at the West by embracing cryptocurrencies. As China is going one way, Japan's going the other way. This, this could, I mean, if I don't know if it's too late or not, but I mean, if it would have been earlier, it, Japan could have, the salvation of Japan could have been cryptocurrencies because they have such a demographic problem there. They have a demographic nightmare and their culture is being destroyed and it's, it's really bad what's going on in, in Japan. In fact, Jennifer, Jennifer and I watched a documentary on Netflix about the idols in Japan. And if you haven't seen it, 
wow, it's an eye opener. These young girls, they're called idols, and they basically sing and dance, and and they're worshipped by these armies of of old men, mostly single old men. And so some of these girls are as young as 12, 13, 14 years old. There's definitely a sick pedophile sexual thing going on there. If you get a chance to see this documentary, watch it. It's on Netflix. I don't remember the name of it, but it's about uh, idols in Japan. It's a sick, sick, sick society. And uh, the culture, the, the financial catastrophe that happened in 1990 threw the country for a loop. One of the men that's interviewed in there is like, he says, well, we don't have any hope for a really good job anymore and it takes two incomes to raise a family. That means both my wife and I have to work full time and I just, I'm just not interested. It's too much work. I'm too lazy and I'd rather just worship these idols. So these grown men are worshiping these young teenage and pre-teenage girls. It is, yeah, watch the video. So uh, Japan is one that could use cryptocurrency to save their demographic time bomb that's coming. Uh, they've done something similar in the past. We know they were able to take over automobile and television uh, manufacturing and actually save their economy. But uh, as to whether or not they're too late to the game with cryptos, uh, we'll have to see. So we're rolling over again here. Um, let's take a final look at Bitcoin. Uh, this is pretty bearish. Uh, one thing I want you to notice here is that the MACD here is about to cross the zero line. You can see one of, the, one of them is crossing the zero line. The other one's following it down. We have not seen this type of action in the MACD. So that's pretty darn bearish. Um, you can see that we had a, a pretty serious bounce at zero on the MACD on this last move around 5,000. So I would say just based on this chart alone, um, it is time to keep your powder dry and watch it very carefully. If you're looking for some coins for a long-term play, if you like some the fundamentals of a particular coin, you may be able to pick them up on the cheap. But as I said yesterday, and I've said many times, there's going to be a 90% correction at some point in the future. And that point could be now. Uh, this chart is telling me that 7,800 could actually be in the cards for this market. And boy, if you think you've heard the Bitcoin bashers and the pundits come out, <laughs> you just wait until we go from 20,000 uh, down to 7,000. That's going to be about a 67% bear market if we do that. Uh, be careful uh, if that starts to happen that your scaled in buys are pretty conservative because you don't want to get trapped in Bitcoin if it's overpriced. You want to scale in. If you notice my scaled in buys were 0.01 Bitcoin, little tiny bytes. Because, you know, if you buy 0.01 Bitcoin at 16,000 and Bitcoin goes to um, 7,500, that doesn't hurt that bad, especially if you scaled in other ones down below it. But if you bought like a half a Bitcoin or Bitcoin at 16,000 and Bitcoin gets cut in half, that's a big, that's a big loss. That's a big, uh, a big hit to your portfolio. And you know, you want to follow the saying, you know, live to play another day. You don't want to get caught to where you can't play anymore because what's going to happen, and that's what happens to the market in general. That's what has happened to Bitcoin in the past. Uh, what happens in long bear markets is everybody's waiting for it to come back and they're not really doing anything. So we had that 
uh, we had this long one from uh, boy it's hard to see the chart it's risen so high but you can see from March February all the way to May there was just kind of this long dull period same thing here long dull period right here long dull period um, a crash down to here long dull period uh, could that happen absolutely it can happen again don't think it can't happen again so don't be caught off guard if we get another crash and we'll talk to you next time